Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. We are so happy to have all of you with us this afternoon and glad that you stuck around to be with us. We are gonna check to make sure you're awake right away with a quick poll uh, that is related to our topic today. So we're gonna ask our wonderful support person. So you see the polling question there on your screen. And the question that we're asking you is, which of the following do you believe is the key to giving teachers real choice in their professional learning? And we're asking you to choose just one of those answers. Those of you that are uh, popping in to our session, uh, we have a poll up on the screen that we're asking everyone to answer. Which of the following do you believe is the key to giving teachers real choice in their professional learning? Funding, content-related professional learning, understanding personal areas of weakness, peer support, administrator support, or professional learning aligned to personal and professional goals? We'd like for you to choose one of those answers. And since I'm not running the poll, I can't see how many we have who have um, sure. done the poll. We have about 61% participation. Okay, so if uh, those of you that are just joining us, if you will uh, put in an answer to that poll that you see on your screen, and then we will show the results. I see someone in chat is saying that they cannot see the poll, and I'm wondering if it is because they joined after it was launched, and that might be the case, and if that's the case, that's okay. You should be able to click polls down at the bottom and have it pop up, I believe. That is correct. Yep, at the bottom of your Zoom window, you should see the polls icon. It's got little bar graph symbols there. Thank you. All right, hopefully by now everyone has chosen an answer. And so we'll go ahead and look at the results. So it looks like overwhelmingly, um, most people are saying that professional learning aligned to per personal and professional goals is the key to giving teachers real choice. And that's something that we're going to talk a little bit about uh, during our session today. And before we jump into that, I'd like to uh, take a little bit of time to introduce myself and allow my fellow presenters to introduce themselves. My name is Jennifer Stevens and I'm the president and CEO for Virginia Ed Strategies. We're a nonprofit based in South Boston, Virginia, a small town in, in Southern Virginia. And we are a nonprofit that works statewide, providing um, a great deal of professional development and support services for both business and K-12. And we have a mission to really do a great deal of uh, various services that help students be prepared for the next step in life. And of course, one of those services is educational research. And we were very blessed to um, win one of the teacher-directed professional development awards um, this past year and have just gotten started with one of those projects this year. And uh, you'll be hearing a little bit more about that during this session. Uh, my background is uh, as a teacher, but I've also uh, been working with Virginia Ed Strategies for the last 14 years. And uh, I am the project director for the Choice uh, Initiative. Um, and I'm also project director for an I-3 grant that will be ending this year, the Rural Math Innovation Network. And so um, we have had uh, a great deal of, um, I guess, blessing and also um, a lot of luck and uh, done a lot of work with the U.S. Department of Education with uh, educational research over the last several years. So I'm going to pass it along and let Amanda introduce herself. Hi, my name is Amanda Adams. Um, I am the Director of Policy Planning and Innovation for Virginia Strategies, and I've been with the organization for about three years. Um, we're based in South Boston, but we actually live all across the state. 
um, from one end of the other and north and south. So I am based in Front Royal, um, which is not technically Northern Virginia, but near Harrisonburg and, and Winchester. And my role in the project is um, primarily, I do a lot of the building out of our dashboard and the building out of our professional learning menu um, and kind of orchestrating all of the things that go into that and connecting with all of the different parties from teachers to coaches to administrators who interact with any of those pieces of our project and just kind of keeping all of that rolling and making sure that it all functions and is accessible when it needs to be, um, which is really easy to say, but it is very complicated to do. So I will turn it over to Alicia. Hello, my name is Alicia Belcher and I am the Instructional Specialist for Virginia Ed Strategies. And for the Choice Project, I'm the lead instructional coach. Um, I live in St. Paul, Virginia, so a tiny little town in Southwest Virginia. Um, in the Choice Project, I work closely with the instructional coaches, so just guiding and supporting them um, as they work with teachers. I've also done a lot of work to help develop materials and resource, resources for the coaches and for the coaches' community of practice. And um, like my fellow coworkers, we're just really excited to be here and, and have you all join us to talk more about the Choice Project today. So our next activity is what we would like to call a rose thorn bud. And it involves you all responding um, to some questions we should see on the screen. So if you head over to minty.com and you can do this on your computer or on your phone um, and put in the code that you see on the screen, um, you should be able to see the different questions as they come up. And we just want you to go ahead and do the first question, which is asking um, what is a success or small win that you've experienced since launching your EIR program? All right, so our first response is shifting gears from in-person to online PD, secured pilot district, launching a pilot for our study, and meeting our teacher recruitment goals. And I'm gonna give about 30 more seconds to see if anybody else wants to put in some answers and then we'll go on to the next question. Recruit pilot districts, okay. A lot of pilot going on and we are in the same boat. So that is awesome to hear. All right, oh, getting closer to teacher recruitment goals even in a COVID year, amen to that. We are gonna talk about some challenges like that later on today. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go generating buy-in. Absolutely, yes, 100%. All right, I'm gonna go on to our next one which is what's one challenge you've experienced since launching your program? And that should, question should go ahead and populate right there on that same screen that you have. Teacher burnout due to the pandemic, recruiting schools, <laughs> recruitment, districts dropping out due to low test scores, managing COVID safety protocols with different partners, getting dashboards up and running. I feel that one in my heart of hearts, 100%. Making our description of being in the control group sound attractive, recruiting large districts for RCT, districts are overwhelmed right now, 
The state has changed the standardized test. Oh my goodness. It is really hard to, to sell anything that seems like extra work right now. Changing modes to best support teachers. Adapting, very much so. All right, thank you. So we're gonna to go to one more, last one. And we're gonna talk about what are you looking forward to in terms of rolling out your project? I know we've got some challenges. I know we're all feeling the tug of trying to sort those out and balance them, but we all have a few years ahead of us. So what are you looking forward to once you kind of get past those obstacles? Implementation and research. Working on sustainability with partners, okay. Making a difference in the lives of our teachers and students. Absolutely, that's why we're all here. Seeing how teacher choice impacts student outcomes. Simplified systems, yes. Having some outcome data from our first RCT cohort. Anybody else before we wrap? All right, well, awesome. Thank you, everyone. Oh, no, oh, sorry, we have one more. Implementing an innovative approach for districts. Innovation is in my title. So I have a dear love for anything that's innovative and outside of the box thinking. So that's exciting. It's really exciting to look forward to. All right, so we are going to move on. Thank you everyone for sharing and just know that we feel you on the show. We are going to talk about some of the ones that we're facing and just kind of dig in a little bit deeper as we go along. First though, we want to show you our promo video, which went out to teachers to kind of tell them a little bit about our project and encourage them to think about joining us. Um, and then we're going to use this video, we're going to go back through it um, and kind of touch on some of the pieces and dig a little bit deeper into some of the details it talks about. Um, if for any reason you can't hear the sound or if there's any lag or anything, please drop it in chat because I want to make sure everyone is able to view it. When is the last time you invested in yourself professionally? How often are you able to make your own professional learning decisions? When is it your choice? Virginia Ed Strategies is launching a new program, the Professional Learning by Choice Community, or more simply, CHOICE. This program targets high school science, mathematics, computer science, and CCE teachers, and offers $1,000 a year to cover professional learning that you choose. The $1,000 stipend doesn't just cover the training. It can also be used for associated professional learning class, such as travel or materials. This is an opportunity to determine what you're excited to develop and to learn. We offer a self-assessment to help you discern what's immediately relevant and applicable for you. You can then start with the areas that seem exciting, interesting, or fun, because we know if you start in a topic that intrigues you, you're more likely to be in context that makes other skills that much more interesting. Moreover, we want to empower you to be honest about how you learn. Do you learn best in person or virtually? Are you a reader or do you prefer experiential learning? How much time can you devote without feeling resentful? We want to help make the barrier to commitment and growth as low as possible by enabling you to slow life professional learning options that work with your learning style. But choice isn't just about training. We're also offering a community of practice, inclusive of Virginia teachers from all across the state and even pairing you with your own instructional coach. We know that peer collaboration is vital to teacher success and that learning from others allows you to reflect on ways you can enhance your teaching and adjust your practice. The more minds that come together, the more likely you are to add value and purpose to your professional learning and implementation. But this also gives you a chance to lighten the load. It's been a challenging year and having an opportunity to collaborate with others and make authentic connections helps teaching feel less isolating and offers a standing soundboard to bounce ideas off of and a support system to lean on. The biggest benefit of choice is that it is an investment in you. 
Taking ownership of your professional learning is key to your future success in education. Learning a new skill gives you a personal boost and self-confidence. It increases your value and keeps you at the cutting edge of your field. Choice puts you in control of your future. If you're interested in learning more about the Choice Program, check out our website and complete a teacher interest form today. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us with any questions. We look forward to speaking with you. All right, so hopefully that gave you a little bit of insight. And I am going to go ahead and move us over to walking through the video and interacting with it. So give me one second. I know you can't possibly believe after such a wonderful video that we have had struggles recruiting teachers, <laughs> but yet we have, just right. like many of you have said you have. So, and I'll let Jennifer take it away. So as I mentioned before, Virginia Ed Strategies uh, is a nonprofit organization. We were formed in 2007. So we've been around for quite some time and I've actually been with the organization since its inception. Um, since uh, 2007, we have garnered uh, over $45 million in private and federal funding to date. And all of that money has been used towards our mission, which is uh, to um, basically put together partnerships with K-12 and uh, various community stakeholders in an effort to bring innovative solutions uh, to our partners and to their communities to uh, basically prepare our students for whatever those next steps are after high school. We do have a wonderful team and you have had the opportunity to meet just a couple of them. Our team is small but mighty, as I like to say. Uh, we have uh, just uh, five of us that are uh, on board right now, and we do also have some wonderful uh, consultants that work with us, uh, but every one of us is passionate about empowering educators, and we're very excited about this, this new project. All right, so... We're gonna look at choice by the numbers just real quickly. And um, we have a grant for 10.8 million and it's of course split over five years. So we launched in January of this year um, and we are in the middle of our pilot year. And then of course we'll run through December of 2025. We are hoping to serve 2,100 secondary STEM teachers. And we'll go into detail about what exactly we mean by that here in a few minutes. Um, and of course, it's 100% teacher directed professional learning. Um, we want to really put everything from participating in the project to um, setting goals to picking professional learning. All of it is driven by the teachers who are engaged in the project. There's not a whole lot of things that we instruct them to do except how they interact and how they make requests and, um, you know, approving where the funding can be used in terms of just making sure that it fits the bill for what we're offering. So in that vein, we're gonna go over here to another Mentimeter. Um, and we wanted to ask you um, what word comes to mind when you're thinking of professional learning. And so it's a different code this time. You can see it there on the top. And we've got a couple answers already. And I'll let everybody have a couple minutes here to go ahead and share with us other words that come to mind when they think about professional learning. Time. Absolutely. Personal. Operations, networking. Creative. 
career driven growth. I like that word purposeful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm stuck on personal, but I think I just remember sitting in a library doing school directed professional learning and not feeling like it was very personal. So I like that's what people think of when it's up there. Mm -hmm. I like that networking and autonomy are kind of dominating, collaborative. I'm going to give you guys about 30 more seconds. If anyone else wants to add anything, um, we'll move on. Worthwhile. Worthwhile is so tiny up there, but at the same time, I think it's when I think of all the challenges that everyone shared earlier, I think that that's the part that we're all having trouble convincing our teachers of is that this really is a worthwhile opportunity, even if there is just a little bit of legwork at the beginning to get going. Relevant. Central. All right. Thank you, everyone. Back over here. I think mentioning the word networking is also really important too. And I, we'll talk about that a little bit in, in our session. But one of the things that we've heard from our teachers is the importance of, of really being able to um, have that network of peers across the state. Because many of our teachers in Virginia um, work in very small schools um, and may be the only teacher in their school or even in their school division that teaches that subject. Um, and so, that that networking piece is, is a huge um, sell for some of these teachers. Absolutely, 100%. All right, so we talked about professional learning and we talked about words that come to mind. Something that we wanna share are kind of our goals as we launch into this project and we seek to recruit teachers and engage with all of our educators across the state. Of course, we're hoping to leave this project with a cadre of highly effective teachers all across the state that are able to interact and work with their peers and, and improve their student outcomes. So of course, student learning impact is, is next on our list. Um, Really, we're hoping to show that giving teachers choice in their own professional learning doesn't only positively impact student outcomes, but we also wanna develop a model that can be replicated in other settings and that will afford Virginia school divisions, particularly our rural ones, better opportunities to attract, retain, and even share these high quality teachers in the STEM content areas. So that's kind of our overall goals as we slowly build this plane as, we, as we're flying it. So some of our challenges so far, um, so you see on the screen here that we are looking at high school teachers from science, math, computer science, and CTE. And initially when we started looking at what CTE teachers we would take, um, there were some in the yes column and some in the no column. And as we kind of went along and got feedback from different division administrators and even teacher input and just our experience um, that our team has had working with teachers in these content areas, we actually decided that we would open it up to anyone that could be classified as a CTE teacher. But then we learned that you may be calling yourself CTE, but the VDOE actually calls you computer science. Um, and it's been interesting having this conversation with teachers saying, well, in the project, you're a computer science teacher. And they're like, no, I, I'm a CTE teacher. And um, for evaluation purposes, we need to really be able to define who's who. So that's been something that we've also been kind of going back and forth at and having to look at course coding and all of those different pieces. And then wanting to serve 2,100 teachers and knowing that we were focusing on rural schools, um, we wanted to make sure that there were 2,100 teachers out there that match with the content areas and all of the pieces that we needed. So the question that came up was, if I'm a middle school algebra one teacher, you know, I'm teaching a high school level content area, you know, can I participate in choice? And at the end of the day, we decided that we really wanted to focus on our high school teachers um, and really 
evaluate what it looks like to give them choice. But with the hope and the ability to go along, um, we may be able to bring in our middle school teachers that are teaching that high school level content. So as we mentioned, we've got that $1,000 a year that, um, and that's each year that they're in their project. So you're gonna learn here in a little bit about what our cohorts look like. Some teachers are able to participate in the project for more than one year. Um, so they get $1,000 each year that they participate and it can be used for the registration costs for professional learning, but it can also be used for travel, lodging, meals related to attending that professional learning and then materials that they either need to participate in it or maybe um, they go to this amazing opportunity and they want to be able to implement it in their classroom, um, but they need certain tools or resources to be able to do so. And so that's up for consideration as well, um, which I think is really exciting because I know a lot of times teachers see things and it's just not something that they want to be able to pay for out of pocket. Um, so we're happy to be able to offer them something that they can be selective with. So in order to help teachers select what professional learning they're gonna participate in and to kind of have an idea of what our teachers' strengths and weaknesses are, within our dashboard, we have um, originally what we thought would be a self-assessment for teachers to complete, but actually it turned out to be nine mini self-assessments um, designed on the Likert scale. So the first one that they take is designed to look at their efficacy um, and tied to their content area. And then the other eight that they take are all aligned to the performance standards for Virginia teachers. And so they're able to go in and just kind of respond to different questions. And it's interesting, um, each of these performance standards have performance indicators under them. And so each of the questions is tied to those specific performance indicators. So for instance, student academic progress only has four performance indicators. So that assessment only has four questions. Whereas I think learning environment has nine. And so that one of course has nine questions. Um, and then they are given a score and we decide if they're rated um, expert to proficient to expert or in need of work and then when they go on to write their professional learning goal, which we'll talk about here in a second, um, they will use the results of each of their assessments to think about their professional learning goal. But going back to being choice, one of the things that um, we really strive for is they may take an assessment that says that they need to work on their instructional planning, but maybe last year their standardized testing said that students were weak in a specific area that didn't show up on their assessments. They're allowed to look at that and not necessarily have to focus on the area um, that they're weak in for their self-assessment. So we're really, really hoping to give them some of that flexibility. So when we launched this um, project, we were using the term dashboard and it only meant this, what you're looking at here, which is a menu of professional learning options that teachers can pick from to attend. Um, in all actuality, we actually ended up building an entire dashboard, so to speak, um, within Canvas. And so when you learn about our communities of practice, you'll learn that they are housed on Canvas. And then um, Choice is, of course, a professional learning community, excuse me, community. And so there's a course for everyone that's in Choice to interact as well. And building the dashboard, of course, we've had a little bit of challenges with um, teachers that aren't familiar with Canvas or teachers that are very familiar with Canvas but didn't realize that not all Canvas platforms can talk to each other. So they can't log into their school Canvas account and access ours, um, which has been a little bit of a hiccup, but we are working on it. Um, but within the dashboard, the big exciting piece outside of the communities of practice and the self-assessments being housed on the dashboard is this professional learning menu. And it's not built within Canvas, but it's hosted on a page um, within the choice dashboard on Canvas. And it allows them to sort by the format of the professional learning and it allows them to sort um, by who is leading it. You know, is it self-paced, is it presenter-led, is it a workshop, is it a conference? How much does it cost? What day of the week is it? Um, what time of day? Is it available? 
and all of those different pieces. Is it something that occurs once? Is it something that occurs, you know, multiple days over the course of the semester, like a, a college course or something like that? And they're able to break it all down. They can also sort by the performance standards. So if they came up weak in instructional planning, they can go in and say, I only want to look at professional learning that's related to instructional planning, and they can do that. Um, and there's a couple other characteristics that they can go in and break it down and sort it through. So we're really excited to be able to give them access to this and have providers um, share what they're offering so that we can pull it into the dashboard and make it easy for teachers to find. All of that being said, um, we've had some challenges. The first one is really gathering details. We are a, you know, within our state, we have a large college system. We have a, a lot of different uh, providers out there. We also have providers that work with Virginia that aren't necessarily housed in Virginia and trying to gather all of that information so their teachers can find it in a one-stop shop is a bit of a challenge. Um, so we created a survey for providers to fill out so that they could tell us what they have, which in theory is great because it asked us, it asked them all the questions we need to populate that, that dashboard. But finding providers who are willing to rapidly learn who we are what the choice project is and then give us all of that information um, has been a little bit of an uphill battle that we are still kind of raging. Um, so we know that as we go along, it's gonna get easier, but right now we're still in the midst of providers realizing that we exist and we are giving teachers money to come to them. We just need this, them to tell us what they have. Um, and then the last piece of that is the turnaround. So we do have providers or teachers, the teachers are allowed to um, submit professional learning that they've learned about for us to add to our dashboard. Um, but a lot of times, you know, you get that email that says, hey, this is happening and it's in two weeks. Um, and of course we need to be able to upload it and make it pretty and make it where that they can sign up for it and make sure our systems talk about it so that we're tracking the money that's spent. Um, and sometimes we don't have that amount of time that we need to be able to do the turnaround to make it quickly accessible to the teachers in the way that we want to. So we're working on that. But one of the things that makes our life easier um, and one of the ways we're reaching our providers is through all of our choice partners. And really we couldn't do what we're doing if it weren't for all of the partners that you see here on the screen. Each one of them serves um, on our choice advisory leadership team and they are helping us to do work groups and to implement um, all pieces of the project they are allowing us to interact and network with um, not only providers and, and school divisions, but just additional partners as we go along. And um, they're definitely part of our, our building team here. And so with that in mind and thinking about how proud we are to have all of these people backing us and supporting us and championing us along the way, we wanted to ask you all to tell us a little bit about your partners. So there should be a link in the chat um, to be able to come into this Jamboard. And all you have to do is, if you were to do a Google image search for your one of your partners and you just copy it, you should be able, oops, to paste it right in there, unless I didn't copy it, in which case you can't do that. And then you should be able to paste it right in there and tell us who your partners are. So. We love learning about you as much as we love sharing about who we are and what we're doing. So this is an opportunity to to the one of the partners that are backing you and supporting you as you're overcoming some of the challenges of, of rolling out your project. As Amanda said, and I'll just mention this as you all are doing that, we have been very blessed to have pretty much every organization in Virginia um, that uh, interacts with K-12 education working with us on this project. And the one thing that we like to say when we present or when we talk to our schools is that many times when you go after a grant, a competitive grant, you, you go and you ask the partner, will you give us a letter of support? Will you, you know, show that you're working with us? 
and that's kind of the extent of the support or you know perhaps they provide you a little bit of funding you know as a match which of course is always wonderful but in the case of these partners um, that you saw on the screen uh, they truly are partners every one of them um, the executive director or president or someone in a leadership position um, from every one of those partners uh, meets with us monthly um, if not more often than that and they do work with us on a variety of working groups to really help us to plan and make the hard decisions um, about the various um, things that, that we need to be doing to implement this project. And as Amanda said, without them, uh, we wouldn't be able to do the, the great things that we are doing. And they are very much um, the key to overcoming a lot of the challenges that, that we've talked about so far. All right, so, so far, we've got the state of Florida and the Florida Department of Education, uh, the Learning Policy Institute, the Citadel, Next Tech. I'm gonna go ahead and take ours off here because we've already talked about ours. So I'll give you room for anybody else that wants to add theirs. While you guys are doing that, um, I think one of the things for us that I really like about our partners is um, we do choice day in and day out. It's always on our minds. Um, me personally, I, I, I go to sleep thinking about choice. And so it's nice when we are meeting with our partners to know that even if it wasn't something we were immediately aware of, they were actually working on our behalf um, amongst everything else that they are dealing with or tackling within their own organizations, um, they're continuing to help us push our project forward and, and thinking about ways to address the challenges that we may face or to recruit teachers or to find coaches um, or to, you know, just navigate any of the, the things that kind of pop up along the way. And I, and I really love that because I, I've definitely been on projects where, like Jennifer said, you have people that kind of sign on and then talk to them and they're like oh I didn't even know you guys were doing that <laughs> really because I sent a memo and an email and there was a powerpoint and those are not the partners that we have and I, I think I feel really excited and blessed that we have partners that are so engaged all right so got some other ones popping in here we've got Nova Southeastern University um Learning Forward, Indiana Department of Education, UC San Diego, and South Carolina Department of Education, Florida International University. This is awesome. It's awesome that everyone seems to have such big hitters kind of backing them. Because I know sometimes when you're launching something new, um, you need those names that people immediately recognize to sometimes get you in the room or get that email responded to or that phone call answered. So it's great to see all of the people that you all are working with. I'm gonna give about 15 more seconds, see if anybody's got anything else they wanna add. And if not, we'll go ahead and move on. But thank you for sharing. Um, oh, and we've got another one there coming in. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Wasn't expecting a white logo. We will think about that next time. So Appalachian State University. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you all. I head back over here to our video and we will continue our walkthrough. All right, so we're gonna let Alicia do this one. I'm gonna go ahead and click this for you and you take it away. All right, so um, as we've touched on a little bit, Choice is a professional learning community comprised of all project staff, all the Choice teachers, um, all of the Choice instructional coaches, and also all of the administrators who have teachers participating in the project. So the Choice PLC is then broken down into three cohorts. Each of these three cohorts consists of multiple teachers' communities of practice, 
Um, and those teachers community of practices are comprised of a pair of instructional coaches and their teacher groups of approximately 30 teachers. Um, there are also coaches community of practice. So those are comprised of all of the choice instructional coaches and members of the choice project team. And there's also an administrators community of practice that is open to all administrators who have teachers participating in choice. Um, within the choice dashboard, which as we touched on is hosted in Canvas, there is a um, course for the overall choice PLC, as well as a course that represents each individual COP. So this allows participants to engage with everyone in the project, but also um, lets them be able to make those deeper personal connection within those communities of practice. So cohort zero began in July of this year, and it's gonna run through June of 2022. And in cohort zero, we have approximately 80 teachers and they are broken down into four teachers communities of practice, um, and they are served by eight instructional coaches. So cohort one is gonna begin in July of 2022, and it will run through June of 2024. So during cohort one, we plan to serve 1600 teachers, um, and school divisions will opt in, followed by schools and then teachers. So this is different from cohort zero, where we had teachers electing to participate on their own without staff engaging division or school administrators beforehand. So in cohort one, we're gonna have 35 teacher communities of practice. Um, and we'll have 108 instructional coaches who will participate in their coaches community of practice. And then again, we're gonna have that community of practice for administrators. Um, cohort two is gonna begin in July of 2024, and it will end in December, 2025. So the schools and teachers who wanted to participate but were not served in cohort one can participate in cohort two. So in cohort two, we're gonna serve 500 teachers. We're gonna break them into 16 teachers communities of practice, and we'll have 32 um, instructional coaches. And then again, we'll have that community of practice that's open for administrators. So now let's talk a little bit about instructional coaches. So each choice teacher is assigned an instructional coach who is there to support them um, throughout their engagement with the choice project. So um, some of the roles of the choice instructional coach is to guide teachers through that self-assessment process and to provide guidance to them in um, navigating and using the choice dashboard. Um, they also serve as a mentor to teachers um, by assisting them in their selection of professional learning opportunities. And they also work with teachers to implement those new professional learning skills into their classrooms. Um, teachers meet with their instructional coaches in several different ways throughout the project year, and all of those meetings are virtual. So teachers will have two one-to-one -one meetings with their instructional coach. Um, one of those is gonna be at the beginning of the year to set a professional learning goal. And then there'll be one again at the end of the year to review their professional learning goal and, and touch and reflect on their accomplishments. Um, those instructional coach pairs that I mentioned earlier, um, they come together and they host teachers community of practice meetings each quarter. And they just meet with those teacher groups um, to let them engage and interact with one another and to provide resources and support to them. Um, instructional coaches also offer some small group meeting windows several times throughout the year. And each of those are open for one hour. Um, and there's different focuses for those small group meetings, depending on where we're at in the project year. Um, but they may touch on things such as selecting professional learning, um, developing an implementation plan, or hosting some roundtable discussions to reflect on strategies um, for sustaining professional learning outcomes. Um, instructional coaches will also provide ongoing support to teachers throughout the year in several ways. Um, they're going to do office hours, and these are optional for teachers. Um, they can attend if they're experiencing difficulty um, related to different parts of um, the coaching cycle. So whether that's participating in professional learning um, or developing an implementation plan or just finding ways to implement what they've learned into their classrooms. Um, and finally, coaches will check in with teachers via email every six weeks to give them some project updates and action items. And they'll also engage with teachers by facilitating those online discussion forums.
Felicia. All right, I'll let Jennifer jump in on our professional learning goals. Well, as we mentioned earlier, all of the teachers are doing the self-assessment, which helps them to take a look at their own strengths and weaknesses um, as it pertains to the Virginia performance standards. And once they have done that self-assessment, they're able to then um, really think about what they want to do for the year as far as their professional, professional learning. And so they will set a professional learning goal, um, which is um, set in place as a SMART goal. And, and the assignment that we put for them in Canvas kind of takes them through step-by-step step to uh, help them um, as you see the sample uh, on the screen. All right, now we are going to take you guys into breakout rooms real quick and looking at the time, I think we might spend about eight minutes in breakout rooms uh, before we bring it back and wrap up. So it's a little bit of a change for our um, lovely ladies that are helping us run here, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up and All right, well, I think that we were planning to show you all or, or at least go back to the beginning poll. So I'll ask our wonderful support person uh, to show the results of the beginning poll. And you'll remember that we asked you all the question, which of the following do you believe is the key to giving teachers real choice in their professional learning? And we ask you all to, to choose just one, funding, uh, content-related professional learning, understanding personal areas of weakness, peer support, administrator support, or professional learning aligned to personal and professional goals. Um, I hope you can see uh, from, from our presentation that we have tried very hard to look at all of these areas uh, as we have developed um, our project. And so we believe that all of these are key to giving teachers real choice uh, in their professional learning. Um, and so I think we just have about four minutes left of our presentation and we would be happy to uh, answer any questions that you all might have or just, you know, to talk for a couple minutes about uh, challenges or, or anything that you all have, have dealt with in your projects. So I just kind of opened the floor to, um, to anything you all would like to share. And feel free to unmute yourselves or um, throw things into the chat box. I have a question about the program. If the teachers, um, are they uh, given the opportunity to go beyond the dashboard of offerings or how do things get added um, to the dashboard? That's a great question. So since we are operating in Virginia, we decided to build our dashboard um, with providers that are known and trusted um, by teachers and administrators here in Virginia. So the majority of opportunities that teachers will see in the dashboard are either uh, opportunities provided by Virginia providers or providers that are known to uh, Virginia. So some of them would be um, providers, something you know, like SREB or, or others. Uh, it could also be conferences outside of Virginia um, that are known like ASC, uh, ASCD or something like that. Um, but teachers do have the opportunity to, um, to go outside of the dashboard. We certainly want to give them that choice. And so they, uh, in the dashboard, are able to fill out a form to let us know about other opportunities that they're interested in pursuing. And we use that information to um, provide that information to other teachers in the dashboard. So that helps us to build uh, the menu of, of great opportunities for teachers. There's there's a question. A, yeah, question in the chat. Um, how do teachers know which are the best PD options to choose for them? So that's a, also a great question. And um, certainly our pilot year is going to help us to really, you know, look at this and, and, and figure this out. But, but our 
plan right now is that teachers are using the self-assessment. We mentioned earlier that the self-assessment that we have built is a tool that is based on the Virginia performance standards. In, uh, in Virginia, teachers are evaluated against eight performance standards. Um, and, and so those performance standards are what we use to build the self-assessment. Please forgive me, I of course work at home and you're hearing my dogs in the background, of course. Um, but um, they're using that self-assessment. We're also asking teachers to consider the goals of their schools and also consider um, past results of their students. So students, teachers have lots of different ways of looking at data and not just looking at their own personal growth and looking at those self-assessment scores, but also really looking at the, the, the data around them and, and their community, their school community um, and their students in order to, to make decisions about what, what are some of the best PD options to choose. And then of course they have the support of their peers and their community um, of practice, as well as their instructional coaches to help them make those decisions. And I would just add, they, they write that professional learning goal that is really kind of their guiding light for what they select. Absolutely. Other questions, comments? I know that we are upon the hour. We invite you to please learn more about us by visiting our website um, and um, reach out to us if you have uh, other questions or, or thoughts. We are happy to engage with, with you all. Thank you for being with us today.